All right, so welcome to Feed Your Mind today. And I want to thank, first of all, our sponsor, Mediacom Business, for making this series possible through Fuse Des Moines Chamber of Commerce. And I'd like to introduce Holly Jacobson to talk a little bit about Mediacom. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm glad you could attend Feed Your Mind. Um, today, I don't have a lot to speak of uh, as compared to the last uh, two uh, Feed Your Mind. Um, just a brief touch on our small business bundle. Our phone lines still have unlimited long distance and our data also has unlimited data as well. So, and again, just a brief touch on a few of the features and benefits of our small business program or small business contracts that we have. On top of, of course, I still have that promo that's available through me and not the call center. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, comments, concerns, please feel free to give me a call or send me an email, whichever one. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you, Holly. and. Uh, Everyone who is uh, able to be here today, it's so great to see so many people here. And do make sure that you reach out to Holly if you have some connection needs for your business, of course. Uh, so today, I would love to introduce Brian to you from Visionary. Uh, Visionary is a great local success story here in the Moyne area. Uh, Brian and I were chatting a little bit earlier. He's been with the company uh, from the beginning. <laughs> we're talking about what his employee number was. Uh, Visionary has been a small business uh, and a little bit more than that. <laughs> right, Brian? Uh, yeah. But Brian is here today to uh, talk to us a little bit about how to make our website work for us. Brian uh, does provide the backbone to search engine optimization and search marketing solutions. He comes from Minnesota and he was telling us, oh, if we think it's here, <laughs> we don't yeah. want to like <laughs> further up north. But Brian, I will let you go ahead and uh, share with us your expertise and your wisdom today. Yeah, thank you. I will say we actually have a Mediacom line in here and it's been a savior for the last year now. So helped us, you know, have everybody be remote, but still connected. So um, I'll start in with who I am. And, and uh, Daniel kind of mentioned my little employee number. It was 13, uh, lucky number 13. And uh, we've had some people come and go since then. And um, I've been around visionary for a long time, but, I'll get into it. Visionary has actually been around since 1992. So uh, it was kind of, uh, it started as a software company and turned into a web and internet company as time came, went along and the internet really grew. But uh, a little bit about me, uh, you know, I'm a, a techie from birth. I built my first website in 1997. I'm sure you can all imagine what a website looked like back then, not what they are today, that's for sure. I love Legos. You might be able to see some in the background there. But there's always Legos on my desk. And uh, I spend, I've kind of uh, spent a lot of time on both sides of the tech world here at Visionary. I, I'm both a developer, so I write code, I uh, build websites, I do some design work, but I also help project manage uh, some of our, our clients' projects. Um, Trish is saying that she'd love to see a website from 97. We'll have to pull it up. There's there's a cool tool that you can see some old sites. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, so Visionary, we've, we're in the East Village. Um, if you know what the Metro Waste Authority building is, there's a big, huge mural on the uh, western or eastern wall. That is the building that we are in. We've been here since 2007-ish, 2006, I think, actually. Um, before that, we were just over on the other side of the river. Uh, definitely started off as a software company. So, you know, to ship out our product, they had to put it on a disc, mail it to somebody. If there was a bug on that, that's a big issue because now you have to send out a whole new set of discs. The internet has alleviated that a bunch. If there's a bug, you can quick fix it and push it out and everybody gets the update right away. Uh, we have about 30 employees right now. We actually have somebody starting next week. Um, and then I think somebody a week or two after that. So a whole new experience for us. We actually didn't bring anybody on board in the last uh, 11 months, um, partially because of the pandemic. Um, 
and we just couldn't hold off anymore. So onboarding somebody virtually will be different. Uh, we really focus on building very custom solutions for our customers. So very few things that we make are, you know, template based or something like that. And we have a few, well, we have a whole bunch of local and a few national clients. Anyway, so we're not here to talk about Visionary or me. We're here to talk about your website and how you can help make it work for you. And probably one of the things that I see most frequently with all of my clients and even ourselves, we are not, you know, we're guilty of some of these things ourselves, is not setting goals. So oftentimes people kind of go and say, if I build it, they will come. You know, the field of dreams thing, and that is not true for a website. Sorry. Uh, you can build it. You got to help people find it. You got to help people know what it's for and what its purpose is. And what that means is that you have to have a planned strategy for what you want your website to do, what is it trying to accomplish, and who are you talking to? Um, much like, you know, marketing 101 classes way back for some of us, you got to know who your target audience is, and it can't really be everyone. Um, you, you will probably all know who your customers or your clients are, and that's who you're trying to talk to. Try to figure out who that is and make sure the website is talking to them. So the first step is what is your site's purpose? What is it trying to do? And we'll get into how you can start accomplishing some of these goals, but I think it's really, really important to set the goal first. Is your goal to increase sales by capturing and converting leads, you know? And this is a very common one. You might see people with their contact forms. You want somebody to reach out to you. You wanna to get to know them. Or if you have an online store, you want somebody to make that purchase. Or maybe you're trying to build your brand recognition. Um, you know, it's uh, kind of uh, a lot of people, you know, this is where visionary would really be is probably more on the brand recognition is we want people to get to know our name, who we are and what we can do. Um, also, you might want to be improving your communication with your customers. And that's where you're going to explain what you do or why you're so great at it, uh, why they should work with you. In some cases, it might be, you know, if you're a restaurant, you might want to be able to let people know what your menu is or, hey, we're closing early today because it's so super cold outside. Or the final, you might become an authority in your industry. You want people to know that you know what you're talking about and that they should look to you when they have questions about what's going on with what you are doing. None of these are, you know, exclusive of the others. They can all work together. And then you need to know who you're talking to. And I see this a lot. And this is where, you know, again, visionaries are probably guilty of this ourselves. Don't build your website or your content for you. Build it for your customers. Um, you might see things like, uh, you know, in the tech world that I'm in, you might see phrases and word and, and, and uh, abbreviations and stuff that I know what they mean, but that doesn't mean that my customers do. I need to make sure that when I'm building out my content that I'm speaking to my customer, not to me. Uh, again, think about your ideal customer and, or your visitor and try to figure out what are their problems? What are their challenges and how can I solve those? How can my website help solve those? Or at least show them that I can be the person that solves them for them. You know, reach out to me type thing. Okay. Oh, yeah. So this is probably the biggest thing that I think anybody with a website can do is they can help optimize their website for search engines. Now, a lot of times when you're talking search engine optimization, what that means is you're trying to improve your ranking on search results, get more traffic from Google. You'll hear me say Google, but it also means being in Yahoo. Google is something like 70% of all searches today. Uh, it's just going to keep going that way as people use more, do more and more searches on their phones. But just because you're optimized for search engine doesn't mean that it's also not helping your, you know, just your normal visitors find what they need on your website. 
So yeah, SEO is really just helping search engines know more about you. And the goal is to increase traffic to your site, but not just random general traffic, but useful traffic. You want people to visit your site that are actually potential customers or donors or whatever your goal might be. And, you know, you can pay for traffic and get as much traffic as you want, but if it's not useful or valid traffic, it's kind of a waste. Uh, most websites today are built on a content management system. You see some logos over there, you know, WordPress, Shopify, Magento, um, Drupal. Today, you're gonna have Squarespace and some GoDaddy type products. But what those content management systems allow you to do is change content, add pages, stuff like that, without needing to call up your web developer, without having to call somebody like me. So if you have a CMS, most of what I'm going to talk about in this section, you likely can do through your CMS. You don't need to call up your developer. But if you're feeling a little iffy or hesitant about it, I would say I would definitely recommend reach out to them, tell them what your plan is, and they'll let you know, like, hey, here's some other ideas or even uh, now you're gonna have issues. Uh, but the goal that I'm trying to get you here is that you won't have to call up your developer or need technical knowledge to do any of this. So keywords, this is something that is hard for somebody to do when they aren't in your industry, but in your industry, you likely know what people are searching for or what phrases they might be using to try to find your products, services, uh, learn more about your organization. And these are the words that people are typing into Google to find you, or that you want them to type into Google to find you. So to find and research those relevant keywords, the ones that are useful to you, you can brainstorm, you can come up with a list. I oftentimes would start with just a spreadsheet and start making a list and say, these are the ones I think are more important. I'll put those at the top. Uh, there are some tools that are out there that you can type in a search term. You know, For a company like Visionary, I might type in web design and it would tell me, here's some other rel related keywords. And they'll actually tell you, these ones are searched a lot. These ones aren't searched much. If there's a whole bunch of search volume, so if lots of people are searching for it, you might want to use that on your site a lot. And we'll talk about Google Search Console later, but that's a tool that can actually show you how people are finding your site right now and how they're using it a little bit and help that can help you learn what you need to work on or what you have going really well. And you wanna make sure that you keep that safe and secure. Again, don't use your terms, use your client's terms. Um, I would say, yeah, we use the LAMP stack when we build websites, most people would, Look at me with blank glassy eyes if I said LAMP stack. What that means is Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. What you really want to hear is we're using a, a strong, stable tested, you know, hosting environment. That we aren't using some weird technology that's going to go away tomorrow. So make sure you're talking to your clients, not using your terms, but in the terms that they would use. So for example, here's uh, on the right hand side is Moz, uh, kind of on the left and going across the screen is the keyword tool. And you can kind of see if you search Des Moines, here's some of the search volume. And a lot of this is grayed out because we just took a sample, but it can actually tell you, here's some terms, here's how much they get searched. You can see the register shows up a lot when you search Des Moines. Um, with Moz and both of these have free, versions and then they have paid versions as well. With mods, you can see that it's showing you your difficulty score. So the higher the difficulty, it means that there's more competition for you to try to get known for that search term. If I did something very, very generic like web design, that'd be very, very hard. But if I do Des Moines web design, it gets easier. It's a little more specific. And oftentimes when somebody's searching, they're searching geographically or they're searching a little more specifically than something really, really broad in general. But these tools can help you figure out, these are the terms that I wanna to try to work toward and use. And like I said, I'd usually build myself a spreadsheet and kind of keep track of these terms and say, these ones are the ones I think are really important. 
here's kind of the middle priority ones, and here's maybe ones I want to sprinkle in every once in a while. Now we're getting to the page titles, and this isn't the title that you would see uh, in the content of your page, but it's what shows in your browser tab, or it's what oftentimes shows on a Google search result. So you can see, uh, if you find visionary on Google, it's going to look a lot like that. It says visionary, Des Moines web development and design, digital marketing, it keeps going. There's three main components to a good title, and that's the what, where, and who. The what is probably your keywords in the visionary one there. It's the web development and design component. Location is where you are, Des Moines. And the who is your company, organization, or your name, and visionary in this case. Those can go in different orders, depends on how you want to format stuff. But those three main components will help you have really strong and powerful titles. They help you out with getting ranked a little bit higher on search results. They should definitely be readable, human readable. So that if somebody does find it, they can see what you're all about. So don't just shovel a whole bunch of keywords in there. You want it to be readable. And it can help. Uh, with other elements such as uh, screen readers, and we'll get into accessibility in a little bit. There's a whole bunch of benefits to using a really good title. This is something that's definitely can be changed and managed in your CMS on a per page basis. Content. You, if you ever talk to an SEO person, you'll hear the phrase content is king. And that content is everything that's showing on the page. And if you have unique content that was well-written, it is more powerful than just about anything else that you can do on your website. And this would be content is specific to each page of your site. Um, we always recommend use set some header tags. And these are some CMSs might show them as H1, H2, H3, and on. Others might say header one, header two. You see this type of thing in even you know Microsoft Word where you have different headers. And the headers should include some of your keywords that you came up with in your research, but you also don't want to overuse the headers. You know, there's kind of a rule of thumb that you should only have one H1 or header one, and you should you should have up to two H2s and three H3s. The H1 is obviously your most important title. It's what you want that page to be all about. The H2s are kind of subheaders and that type of thing. Make sure that every page has a header, though, at least one H1. You don't have to go and fill out and have a whole bunch of H2s and H3s and whatnot. Make sure you have an, uh, an H1 on every page of your site and make sure that that H1 is relevant to what that page is about. Your content should be natural. Uh, Back in the early days of SEO, you could kind of game the search engines by just blasting keywords in everywhere, but it made it really hard to read. And you all have probably been on a site where you try to read it and you're like, this doesn't, this is hard to read. It makes sense, but man, I can't, it just doesn't flow. That's probably somebody who wrote that content for a search engine. They wrote it for a robot really to read. And that's just not the best way to do it today. The search engines have gotten really, really smart. So just write it naturally as if you're writing to a person, not to a robot. Sprinkle in your keywords where it's natural, to where they naturally fit in. You know, those keywords that you put at the top of your spreadsheet that are really important, get those in there a few times if you can. Throughout different places, different pages on your site. And then images are also very important. Um, we'll get to sizing and stuff like that later, but make sure they have alternate text. This helps with people that are using screen readers. It also helps with your search engine ranking a little bit. And it just generally helps people know what the site is about. Um, we've all seen images become more and more important over the last few years. You see those giant header hero graphics all the time now, and those are great but make sure that you have a text component with that that helps people know what that image is about. When we talk about content being king, we often recommend people that they try to get new content 
on their site as often as they can. That doesn't mean every day, but if you have a blog, write a blog article every once in a while, every week or two, maybe every, maybe even once a month, you know, if you're at the point where you haven't had any new content added to your site in months, just get to, I want one new article a month. And it doesn't have to be a thesis. It can be a paragraph or two about what's going on in your industry or even what's going on in your community. Um, if you hired somebody or somebody has a promotion in the case of like Visionary with Monica, you know, write a little article about that. The new content helps show search engines and other tools out there that, hey, we have fresh stuff, come back and look at us. Consistency. So there are a whole bunch of platforms out there. We collectively call them business listings. And the, the common ones that you see are, you know, Google searches with Google Maps and stuff like that, or the Google My Business stuff, or Yelp, Apple Maps, Yellow Pages even being, and then the social media networks also have all their different platforms where you can have your business. You wanna have things be consistent across that. That doesn't mean that the voice isn't a little bit different. If you're posting to LinkedIn, it's gonna be different than if you're posting to Instagram. It's different audiences likely. But you wanna make sure that if you have your address or your phone number on these platforms, it's the same everywhere. If you have some pictures of your office building or your team or something like that, Use the same picture everywhere. Um, not all the platforms allow you to have images, but if you can, yeah, submit your own, take control. A lot of you have probably at some point gotten an email or seen the little links on a search result that's like, is this your business or claim my business or something like that? This is what we're talking about. If you have a store or an office space, make sure that you have claimed ownership over your Google listing, your yellow pages listing, if it's out there. Um, there are some very cool automated tools that let you manage all of your listings from one spot. If you're interested in those, I won't talk too much about them right here, but you know, reach out to me and I can let you know about them. Um, unfortunately, there's no free ones out there, but there are some that are relatively inexpensive and they're great even for just getting control that you could use for a short time and Make sure that you have everything listed the same everywhere. Make sure that somebody else isn't, you know, adding content or details that you don't want to your listings. You can kind of see that stat down there. If the information is wrong, and the issue with a lot of these is they were automatically generated from whatever source they had, and maybe your phone number is wrong, the address is wrong, maybe you moved and the address hasn't changed yet on Google. If that information is wrong, they're going to have customers overall are going to have a hard time one getting in touch with you two it's starting off the relationship with them with kind of a you know some distrust so this is probably the most technical seo one so if you want to zone out i guess go no <laughs> uh, structured data is it's been around for a few years but it's becoming really really important over the last two or three and this is kind of behind the scenes details that you can add to your page. It goes in the source code. So not all CMSs will support this. You'll have to probably talk to your developer to learn what it can or cannot do. But it's basically a way to tell search engines and other uh, automated tools out there all about each page on your site, about all about who you are. You can throw your company details in here. So here's our address, here's our logo. Here's our store hours. Here's where we're located. Um, if you have products that can show all the products you have, how many you have available even, the price, reviews for it. It goes on and on and on. One of our clients is Des Moines Performing Arts and we use structured data to list all their performances and shows. Obviously they're having a really hard time over the last year. But if you do a Google search for one of their shows, I think one that was supposed to be coming up was Tootsie. If you did, you know, Tootsie Des Moines, you'll probably see the Des Moines Performing Arts website, but then you also see individual performances listed on their dates and the times. And you can click on those and go straight to that performance. So you don't have to go and click through, um, try to find stuff inside the site. We're trying to help people find the page that they need to be on as fast as possible. 
Um, schema.org is kind of the nonprofit that runs all this. Um, you can definitely take a look there, but this one's pretty technical. So I definitely recommend reaching out to whoever's managing your site for you. They can probably help you out. I wanted to make this really very clear. So HTML, that's what you see when you visit your website. That's for people. Structured data, it's for the robots. Um, so structured data does not take the place of all that content. It just helps get you there. All right. Performance. Uh, the easiest way to define website performance is how fast does your website load? There are other aspects to it, but we won't get into those. Um, these tips, and I'm going to go through these ones pretty fast so you guys can actually, we can talk and ask questions and stuff. But uh, your website speed is becoming more and more important. It's actually part of what Google uses to determine what your ranking is going to be on their search results. So if all things, all other things being equal, if one site is a lot faster than the other one, that site is going to be listed first on a Google search result. There's a lot of things that can affect your, your speed. That might be the code that's behind the site. You probably don't have much control over that. But a lot of it is also the content. So if you have huge giant images or big huge videos on your site, that's not necessarily inherently bad, but you need to make sure it's being loaded correctly, trying to give people the best, most optimized version of each image or video that fits their device. So if I'm looking at it on my phone here, that's very different than if I'm looking at it on my high-res laptop, right? I don't necessarily need the same image you know, on both devices. So you want to load the correct one for them. You also want to make sure that maybe you're only loading things when they actually need it. You'll probably see this a lot, especially on news sites. As you scroll, an image loads as you're scrolling. That's called lazy loading. They're only loading that image when you needed it. If you didn't scroll, you never would have seen it anyway, so why load it? Um, those images can have a huge impact, positive or negative, on your site. So positive, you know, obviously it draws attention. It tells people what the page is about. It gets them engaged a little bit. The negative might be if you are, if it's too big or loaded incorrectly, it might slow things down. Also, reducing the number of components or things that get loaded, that's your images, but it's also going to be, you know, extra scripts or, hey, we're bringing in some extra fonts or we're bringing in this styling thing or some external whatever is being loaded. That just because it's external or an additional thing doesn't make it bad, but you just want to be very specific that you aren't loading things that you don't need. Um, there's some stuff that you can kind of do with your developer, and this would be making sure that you have caching enabled and you're compressing stuff. There's a great tool that this one's free, Google's PageSpeed, and I have links to all these at the end. Google's PageSpeed Insights, it, actually, you can type in your address, and it will tell you the results in about a minute. And it can tell you, hey, this is how fast stuff loads. Things look pretty good. Here's some things maybe you need to work on. Um, some of these are might be things that you can do through CMS, but a lot of it is probably stuff that you just pass along to your, your, your technical people. Accessibility, okay. So if you have a physical store, you need to make sure that your store can be accessed by somebody in a wheelchair or that has visual impairments. The same thing is true for your website. There's a Big story from several years back now about Target. Target, the big you know box stores, they got sued a few years back because their website wasn't visually accessible to somebody that had um, that that they were blind. And in the end, Target lost that suit, and they had to redevelop their entire website. And for a company that size, that's millions of dollars. Um, this is true for everybody that. Your website, the ADA does apply to websites as well. You haven't heard too much about small businesses getting hit with this, but it will happen over time. So I would start getting on that now. The great thing is that when something is made to be accessible, it probably helps out a lot of people without disabilities as well. It can help with your search engine optimization. It can help with people that have slow internet connections. Um, even if somebody's, you know, 
probably sounds crazy, but if they're looking at a website through, maybe they have an Xbox, you can load websites on an Xbox, but the interface isn't great. They don't have a keyboard necessarily, but if you made it accessible for people, this helps them out too. There are some cool tools out there that can tell you if you have a bunch of issues or things are looking pretty good. So the wave tool is a great tool that's out there. You can again, type in your website and it'll tell you, hey, here's some errors, things to look at, some alerts, some other issues, that type of thing. Um, accessibility is going to become more and more important as time comes on, goes along. You're seeing a lot of the big companies spending a lot of, or we're seeing a lot of the big companies out there spending a lot of time and effort and money making sure that their giant websites are accessible by everybody. Um, one thing I would say is if you want to see how this type of thing works, use a screen reader. There's a few of them out there that are free. Um, Safari actually has one built in if you're using a Mac. And you can see how your site responds if you're using a screen reader as you try to navigate it without being able to see it. There's some great news though. There are some automated tools out there. And unfortunately, my animated GIF isn't working here, it looks like, Ugh, darn. Anyway, um, you can kind of see the little icon down in the corner of the screenshot of our visionary website. Looks like a little person. If you click on that, a little thing opens up, a little window, and it actually gives you a whole bunch of settings where you can enable larger fonts, uh, higher contrast, or even screen reader type stuff or highlight titles and all sorts of stuff like that. So even though you you may not want to go and or have the time or or even the money to go and make sure that every page on your site is accessible right now, there are some cool automated things that we can install and anybody could install really on your site that would help make every page on your site accessible. It just needs to look at your site for a few days. And once it does that, it's good to go. And then as you add pages or change content, it'll update right along with it. So this is something that it doesn't necessarily help you today, but it shows that you care about your customers, you care about everybody that might be a potential or active customer, and it future-proofs your site a little bit. This is something that can be installed in just about any CMS. Um, probably needs a little bit of developer help, but it's kind of a copy-paste job. So it's, it's pretty slick. So we'll get into the tools. Google Analytics, if you don't have something that's tracking people visiting your site, how many people are visiting it, how many people are using it, what pages are they loading, do that now. Google Analytics is free. It's on something like a quarter of all websites already. Um, it's kind of a copy paste little script, drop it onto your site and it works. And you can go and see how much traffic you're getting, where are they coming from geographically, even down to the city level sometimes. It is anonymized data, so you aren't going to be able to go up. Oh, Daniel visited visionary.com, and I know that he did that, and he went to this page. Um, but you can also start to find trends. That's what analytics is all about, is finding those trends, knowing, boy, this page is getting a lot of traffic. Let's beef up the, the content on that page a little bit. Or, man, I had this marketing campaign for product A, not enough people visited that page. I need to do something about it. Uh, it can also help you track if you're doing email marketing or social media marketing or paying some for ads, you can track how people are visiting, getting to your site. And you can know, are those ad campaigns working? There are other analytics tools out there. Google is just the most well-known. It's free. So if you don't have something already, I highly recommend getting this. Um, we actually have some stuff on our site about the basics of Google Analytics. So if you're interested in that, hit up our website or shoot me a message. Then I mentioned Search Console earlier. Search Console is kind of a partner of analytics, but it looks at your specific site and it can tell you what search terms people are using to view your site. You can sh it can tell you how often you show up in search results, how often people are clicking on those search results on Google to get to you. Uh, you can kind of see in this little screenshot, the average position so the 20th spot for this, for uh, this specific example. Again, it's a free thing. 
you do have to verify you're the owner of the site. There's a few different ways of doing that. It's pretty easy. You may need you know, your IT or tech people to help you out getting that verification done. But once you're done with that, it just collects data and it'll help you out. And here's just a list of all the tools that we kind of mentioned. I didn't necessarily bring up in Image Optum. It is a tool that can help you optimize your images, make sure they're not too big, that they're in the right format, et cetera. So that is all of it. So I will open it up. I think I saw a few questions in here. Let's see here. We did a few questions, Brian. Uh, one, let me scroll back up here a little bit. Um, Trey, really good question, Brian. We're going to put you on the spot here a little bit. Why companies work on websites more than SEO? How are we to pick one that we can And I think the that one is it has to have the name in the title, right? That's how you know that it's a trustworthy company to work <laughs> Well, yeah, no. <laughs> and the best way is if it starts with V and ends with Watt. No. <laughs> um, that's actually really, really hard to answer um, because every company kind of has their own specialty, what they are best at. You know, I would say Visionary, we're very, very good at heavy data websites and building custom stuff. You know, if your website is a little two or three page brochure type site, there's nothing wrong with those. But that's not our specialty. Um, I would be hesitant of anybody, especially with SEO, that says, we guarantee that you'll be number one on Google. There's no way to make that guarantee um, because everybody's search results are different. You know, Google knows a lot about you and what you're interested in. So if I search something and you search something, our results may look very different. Um, it's kind of one of those, if things sound too good to be true, oftentimes they are. Uh, there's a lot of good companies here in the Des Moines area, though. I, I wouldn't talk bad about any of them. It, it really boils down to the relationship. So before you make that choice, talk to them, get to know them a little bit. If you if it, if it feels like uh, you, know, you just aren't clicking, there's enough options out there. I'd go talk to somebody and try to find that relationship. You know, I, I can only speak for Visionary, but we very much look to have long-term partnerships with our clients. We don't really look to be the type where we build the website and then never talk to you again. We want to build the website and then work with you as your partner. That doesn't mean that we're always, you know, hitting you up or trying to sell you something, but we want you to go, man, I have an issue. Maybe there's a solution. If you tell that to us, you know, our goal is to be as honest as possible. So yeah, I think we have a solution or no, we don't, sorry. But um, yeah, there are a lot of companies out there. They're all gonna have specialties. We focus very much on the technical side of things. Marketing companies are gonna be obviously more on probably the design and all the other bits of marketing. Um, there aren't as many purely SEO companies out there as there once was. They've kind of been gobbled up or become either the web development company like Visionary or the marketing company. That makes a lot of sense. Trish asked a question too, apparently um, based on some experiences that the other chambers of commerce have had, are there some website building platforms that are better or worse for SEO than others? Uh, the short answer is yes, but most of the big ones out there are pretty good at what they, you know, they're all going to do a decent job. Some of them will give you a lot more control than others. So when you're talking to Squarespace or a Wix or something like that, where you're probably paying the $10, $15 a month type thing, those ones give you a fair amount of control, but it might be a little bit harder for you to do, or maybe it isn't as obvious. Um, but they're also inexpensive. Uh, the WordPresses of the world that are out there, that's kind of the middle ground these days. Um, they're gonna give you a lot of control, but maybe it's a little bit harder for you to use. You have to have some extra knowledge to know where is the title. 
uh, WordPress in particular, I don't have issues with. We don't use it ourselves. We actually have our own content management system that we built in-house, um, mostly because our focus is very much on security and stability, and we have some very large enterprise clients, and it, there's nothing inherently risky about using WordPress, but we wanted to know everything that was going on behind the scenes, so we wrote our own. Um, you're going to have some others that are a little bit bigger. The Drupals and Joomla's are still around. Um, there's a whole bunch of them out there, but those ones are going to give you a lot of control too. I wouldn't say any of them are necessarily better or worse. Um, it really depends. That's probably more on what is the goal of your site? What is your budget? You know, if your site is four or five pages, the Wix or or Squarespace or even WordPress might be the right way for you to go. If it's uh, very large, very custom with lots of cool tools and stuff, you're probably looking at something else. Okay, excellent. Well, those are the two main questions that were in the so I guess at this time, um, we can open it up. If it has any other questions, if you're in, uh, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask any other questions or comments that you have for Brian. This is Trish and, and you know, I was, I, the reason I brought that up is of course, you know, Chambers of Commerce, we use a member organization database. And, and of course, Visionary did the original websites for the Des Moines East South Chamber, I believe. And then they also did Des Moines East South. And of course, when we moved over to Fuse DSM and, and our website is now actually done through the business that we do or, or the corporation that does our our database. I say that because what we're seeing with a lot of chambers is that these website platform or the platform that they're using, their their SEO has dropped as the, as they've moved over to Chamber Master, who is now creating the website or the platform, and they they have seen their SEO drop, um, and it's scaring them as it should because you know prior to that they may have been on a Word, WordPress or something, but now they're they're dealing with that. And, and so that is scary. I mean, the, you know, we do, we're very digitally focused here. Most of you know, Andy, you know, we creative DSM does digital marketing for us. And so that SEO is just really, really important. I sleep SEO now because I know some, I'm, I know more about it than I need to know. It's just, it's, it's yeah. But yeah, so it is scary that, that we make the right decisions because a lot of times, like you said, small businesses, they're in a, they can't spend a lot of money to get their website done. And so there, it's almost like they're jumping at, you know, that easy, simple solution. Um, and that's just not always the best thing to do. Yeah, I'll be as delicate as I can here. So um, things like WordPress are designed to, to build a website, whereas the system, your membership database system, it's probably great at managing members. And the website was something, the website capabilities were probably added on later. And that's not what their focus is. That's not what their specialty is. And so it's probably missing some of the components that you would expect out of most CMSs out there. Uh, it's, it's kind of a trade-off in the end. You know, I've seen some people, they want to use that tool that does a really great job of managing the members, or I'm going to use the one performing arts again, they do ticketing, right? They have a ticketing system. It's great at selling tickets. It's maybe not the best at websites, even though I think it can handle that just you know, in an okay way. But yeah, you're right. In the end, it's sometimes you have to make compromises. Your budget is a big factor in that. Um, everything takes time and money in the end. Um, but yeah, that's what you what your what some of those other chambers are probably seeing is that they're using a tool that wasn't initially designed for a website and they've added that on and over time it'll probably get better but right now maybe it's not up to the par with the other cms that are available right trey had another question too um why does this wordpress owns the market on platforms <laughs> uh in many ways, they were the first big one. Uh, they were the first one that was super easy to install and came with tons and tons of options for plugins and add-ons. Uh, for what it does, it is great. And back in the 
late 2000s when WordPress really took off, or maybe 2010s, um, it was the one that was so easy to get running on just about any hosting platform. You didn't need to have some special server level access. You didn't have to have somebody who was almost a magician or a wizard at installing things on a, you know, some weird server. Um, for what it does, it is great. Uh, for what we do, it just doesn't work. That doesn't make it wrong. It works great for a lot of people though. All right, fantastic. Any questions from our audience? <laughs> I think, can you talk a little bit, and, and you know, some of us have learned about this a little bit, but the importance of backlinks to your website and what, and, and you know, again, that, that's something we really focus on here, but I think sometimes people don't understand the value and the importance of those. Yeah, I'll start with, uh a brief history of what Google really was at the beginning before they became a uh, the giant monster of the internet. So the idea behind Google search engine was unique when it came out. It used to be Yahoo, AltaVista, if you guys remember that. Um, they were just going out, they find pages, and it was all about how many text, how many, when you search a term, how many times does that show up on the page? That's basically what the ranking was. Google's idea came out of academia, where if you look at an academic paper, its real value is how many times does it get cited in somebody else's academic paper? So citations are really, really important. And when Trish was talking about backlinks, what she's another word for that would be citations. And the idea behind Google was if you have a web page and a whole bunch of other web pages linked to it, that means that that web page is the authority it's got something really good going on and that means it should show up higher on search results so when you go out to build backlinks what you're really doing is you're going on and it's not sometimes it's internally within your own site you might want one page to link to another page if you look at the visionary site you'll see us link from if there's a news article about some web design thing it probably links to our web design services page but the real value is when you can get external sites to link to you um, and the more of those you get, the better. Uh, there are things out there called link farms. I'm going to say stay away from those. That's scary. That is, in the SEO world, we would call that black hat. It's, uh, it'll get you hurt. Google does not like that stuff. They want the links to be relevant. So, you know, the page that links to you should be related to what you're talking about. But if you can go out and build those links, whether it's, and sometimes it can be social media. You can have social media links that link back to your site, but your site can also link to other people. Sometimes it's mutually beneficial linking to and from each other, but it's really building partnerships. Um, for instance, yeah, we have a news article about this event right now on our website and it links to the Fuse DSM website. There's a little bit of value to that, to the Fuse DSM site because Visionary site is linking to them. Now we aren't in the same industry, so that value is diminished a little bit, but it doesn't hurt. Yes, and, and you know, that's the one thing that um, Andy taught us at, with Creative DSM is that the, the value of a chamber with all the backlinks because of all the websites that are listed, it's just and that that leads to the credibility of what you were talking about, that chambers have a very high Google rating. I literally did this once when Andy showed it to me, we had a new member that was coming on board and she said, before you enter that in, um, you know, let's go online and we'll Google where they were at before they became a member of a chamber directory and they were pages down. But the minute we entered them in as a new member and their website was entered into ours, it brought them up onto that, you know, within the first two top two of a search and, you know, when somebody would search. So it's just, it's, I mean, yes, I'm kind of talking about the benefits of our business here, but it, it really, it is about those backlinks. But the danger of that also is we, our old website for the, was it, I don't know, I think it was the Des Moines East Chamber, that was never formally shut down in the, in the, or it was never, it was never tracked, I should say. So of course we owned it at one time and in the transition, way back many years ago, nobody purchased that to keep that safe or to keep that so nobody else ever repurchased that. 
well, some business went out, some, and we don't even know anything about them, but they purchased that website and, and they, they bought all the backlinks to our old chamber website. Now it doesn't really affect anything for us now, but what it did was it created a whole spamming list for this new business to go out there and contact members and use those backlinks. I mean, so don't ever let your website go away, even if it costs you a few dollars to keep it and you're not using that domain anymore, don't ever let it go away. <laughs> so. Yep. And the longer your site is around, the more value it has in Google's eyes. So, you know, the visionary.com domain has been around since 94. That's a lot of history, you know, and even if you start one today, yeah, keep it. It's 10, 15 bucks a year to renew. I would just, for the most part, I would keep them forever. So Brian, what does visionary um, ideal customer like? Oh, well, it's definitely somebody that wants to work with the partner. They aren't, you know, like I said, they aren't looking for the one and done place. So um, I kind of alluded to it. We don't necessarily do a lot of the small little brochure websites. We're probably looking at people that need a little bit of customization, something unique on their site that you can't get with just a drop in plug in. Um, oftentimes there's a lot of data involved as well. We do a lot of work for on internal tools for our clients, helping them know more about their own business. So it's not even stuff that the public can see. It's something that somebody has to log in and they're managing their own business using tools that we've built for them. Um, whether that's, we're just collecting lots of data from their sales or their locations or whatever it might be to, and then presenting that in a way that's readable, you know, and Fortunately, we have lots of cool new stuff coming, you know, with machine learning and soon maybe AI. Hopefully, they don't take over the world. Um, but we can do some pretty cool stuff there. But in the end, you know, I would say whenever we're talking to a potential client, you know, they're obviously testing us out and learning about us, but we're doing the same right back. So um, we don't necessarily take on everybody that wants to work with us. We definitely are a little bit picky because we want to work with people that we know we're going to be around with them for a long time. Their goals align with ours. You know, and I have to, I know there's another question there, but before I've got to get off for another call, but I want, I, now I just lost my total trade of thought. I had something as far as what you were, <laughs> sorry, I'm just like all over the place. Answer Christy's question, or Christy, right. Christy's question. Yeah, Brian, Christy's got a great question. And I'm sure this is probably related to keyword searches as well, but um, the idea of buying a certain domain uh, that might be related to keywords people are searching for, she said specifically she keeps getting an email coming up prompting or suggesting that she buy this domain name. Uh, unless you have a very compelling reason internally to do it, I wouldn't worry about too much. The domain name used to be a really big, or used to help out with your search engine ranking a lot. It still does a little bit. So if there's a keyword in it, that's great. But it's not nearly as important as the titles and the content and even your page speed now um, or the stuff that comes after the domain name in that URL. So, you know, you might have visionary.com slash about us. That about us part is more important than the visionary.com part. Um, it also depends on the cost. If somebody's selling it to you for cheap, eh, why not? But oftentimes they're hitting you up because they want a thousand bucks or something, you know, and unless you have a really compelling reason, I, I'd have to think about it a little bit. Um, you're also probably gonna get people, if you have a good domain name that's been around a long time or an English word, visionary is an English word, obviously we get hit up all the time for people that want to buy our domain and, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a joke because it'd be very, very hard for us to move away from our domain. And we've had it for so long. It's so central to what we do. And beyond all the marketing reasons, there's a whole bunch of technical reasons that'd be very, very hard for us to give it up. But we always respond back with, you're missing a few zeros in the price. And that essentially ends the conversation. But Oh, that's funny. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> well, um, Unless there are any further questions here, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, Christy keep trying to lower their price. So yeah, they are trying to a certain domain name. 
Um, so I just want to thank everyone for attending today. This has been great information, Brian. I got some notes. I'm going to be going testing my uh, website now. I in Google uh, page loader and a few other things here too. Um, but for everyone who with us, make sure you check out the event for other events that are coming up. We've got a ribbon com uh, coming up this week. So make sure that uh, you look at that if you are interested in attending in person. Uh, we have some other things that are happening as well throughout the rest of the month. Make sure you take a look at those too. And so just want to end with that. And once again, uh, thank you to Brian for presenting today and this great information. And once again, thank you to Mediacom Business for being fun of this series today. So we'll see you next time. Thank you so thank much, you. Brian. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. All right, see you later.